Mississippi service in Jackson, Tennessee. I want to thank you for watching this message. Hungry Hearts is a non-denominational church which is Torah observant and spirit filled with the use of certain Hebrew worship tools like this tallit. We believe Yeshua Messiah died to pay for our sins and because we believe we have accepted that sacrifice for his sins, we live by all of God's laws and commandments. We're filled with his spirit and we worship him with it. Today we're going to talk about do you believe God? And before I get into the message today, I want to offer you our free magazine, Pursuit. If you will email, email me at HungryHeartsMIN at AOL.com with your mailing address, I will mail you this magazine for free every, every quarter. The only thing we use your address for is to mail you this magazine and to possibly invite you to a meeting if we're in your area. Now, at TV Land, you might have watched several of our messages before, and oftentimes we do teaching messages, but today we're going to do some spirit-filled preaching. So I hope you're ready for that. If not, uh, don't, don't get offended. I'm not yelling at you, but we're going to preach under the anointing today. Do you believe God? See, a lot of people talk about being a believer in God, and we call Christians believers, but do you believe God? You see, it's not enough... To believe that he exists, you got to do what he says. Because the Lord is looking at how you behave and your actions, and that's how he's judging whether or not you believe him or you don't. Oh, trust me, when my daddy told me to do something, I believed. And if I didn't believe, I was a believer in minutes. Now, I know people, the young people today, they don't get spankings anymore. As a matter of fact, I was talking to a guy at the school board. He said, he said, whippings. He used whippings. Yeah, that's more like what we got back in the day. Yeah, go ahead and cut up in class and see what happened to you. I used to sit on the edge of the, of the aisle in a large school with pods, so I used to see what happened to the boys that, that, that uh, misbehaved in school. I used to watch the whipping they got. I decided I'd put my head down and go to work, amen. I didn't need none of what they had. Oh, come on. We're called believers, but what does it mean? In this world, what do you believe and whom do you believe in? Many people do not believe that God brings trouble. I love to hear natural disaster on the news. Oh, God doesn't do that. Well, let me explain something to you. God seems to think he does. If you look in the prophets, God says he brings the trouble. He brings the punishments. He brings the things on nations that do not obey what he has commanded them to do. I'm convinced right now, I don't remember the name of it anymore, but that big hurricane that ravaged the Bahamas, I am convinced that's a warning to the state of Florida. Now, I got friends in Florida. I used to live in Florida. Florida, there's a lot of immorality in Florida. There is a lot of immorality. As a matter of fact, over the bridge, I mean... It, and through spring break, the grandmother's house we go, and I decided, honey, we're out of here. I got girls, and I'm not about to raise my girls in spring break. Oh, come on, somebody. And so they wonder, why does God do this to us? Simple, you crazy. You crazy. You lucky a place that been leveled by a wave. People in California, why is God bringing the fires here? Now, look, I know there's believers in Florida. I know there's believers in California. But you've got to admit, the majority of people in these two states are not believing. They're not believers in the crazy. How come California's burning down? Look at the crazy stuff they do there. You can't defy God and expect everything to be good. He's going to make a believer out of you. You know, you may not believe now, but let that place burn down a couple more months. You'll get to believing. Even in Atlanta. Oh, come on, somebody. Even in Atlanta, a couple years ago, had a drought. They finally broke down and said, pray. They finally has a headline in the newspaper, Pray. They were two days from running out of tap water in the city. How come we have to go to that state before we'll turn to God? How come we won't do what he says now and believe? Why do we have to be punished first? Because we're knuckleheads. That's why. We're knuckleheads. I said that one time in a church service and Lenise lost it. She says, I'm too visual for that. You can't do that to me. I saw everybody looking like the Klingons with knuckles on the top of their head. We all knuckleheads. We don't want to do what God says, and then we get mad when He does something about it. Well, let me tell you something. I grew up in old school times, and when you didn't do what your daddy told you, you learned to do it real quick. Amen. I mean in minutes. I don't mean in hours. There wasn't a timeout. Timeout, nothing. Timeouts after He whipped you. <laughs> wasn't a timeout before He whipped you. Timeout, so you go to your bed, get on your bed, son, while you cried for the next 30 minutes because He tore your butt up. That's the way I grew up. Don't do what daddy said. Yeah, I tried that one time. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. yeah, you won't want a second time. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. See, nice has become the enemy of God's word. Mm -hmm. Oh, we want it all nice. Oh, I like it nice too. Trust me, a lot of people aren't nice to Pastor B. I like it when it's nice. 
But in order for you to have nice, you've got to live the way God told you to live in this book. I'm going to be clear. If this book is not what you think it is, if this book isn't the Word of God, you got no benefit of hungry hearts because you're not going to last here. You're not going to last here. you got to understand this book is the record of God dealing with humans and that you've got to be willing to trust this book and this book has got to come first. I'm just saying. Galatians 3, verse 1. You foolish Galatians. Now talk about nice. How's that nice? You foolish Galatians. Who bewitched you? Who messed up your head? Who messed up your thinking? Who talks you out of the things that God set up? Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. And let me tell you, that wasn't nice. He didn't enjoy that. As he told me one time, son, that really did hurt. And he really did feel it all. So we always talk about Jesus died in our place, but we don't really get into the pain and the suffering that our sin brought on him. Oh, it wasn't nice. I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by observing the law or by, by believing what you heard? Do you believe? Do you believe? The interesting study on that word, I'm not going to rabbi trail that. But the word believe means there's an action involved. Right. It doesn't mean you heard it. You know, we used to have a saying back in the 70s, I hear you. It means I don't believe you, but I heard what you said. I hear you. you got to take an action. When you believe God, you've got to take an action. Do you even know God? Do you even know God? So a lot of people say they know God, but their idea of God doesn't come from this book. So I want to offer you this book right here, Do You Know God? It's a very small book. See, I like small books. Easy read. Read it in one afternoon. There's a lot in here, though. See, just because it's small doesn't mean it's not chock full of goodies. Do you know God is only $9? And if you go on to Hungry Hearts Ministry with a Y.com, you can order this book. The $9 includes sales tax and shipping. And we'll send it right to your house, and then you can know God. Because God is easy to know. And he would like to know you. And so if you want to know the true and living God of this Holy Bible right here, the Holy Bible, then you just email me, go online, and, and write me for that book. And we'll get it out to you. Is, is the God in whom you believe real or a counterfeit? See, a lot of people make up one to fit their own preconceived notions. They don't want the one from the Bible... He's too hard. Oh, good grief, he's hard. We don't want that. We want a nice God. We want a God who's going to look the other way when we don't do what he says. We want a God who's not going to do anything when the country doesn't do what he says. Oh, it's okay to send with wild abandon up in this place. It's all right. God's not going to do anything to this country. Wrong. Wrong. This country going behind the woodshed. It ain't going to be pretty. The question is, are you going with the rest of them? Hey, I'm trying to help you get out of this. So you say, Pastor, Pastor Bill is mean. Pastor Bill's not mean. Pastor Bill's trying to keep you out of tribulation. I'm trying to get you in the rescue so you don't have to go behind the woodshed with everybody else. Amen. Amen. How many of y'all want to volunteer for the woodshed? Ain't no hands rose in here. Ain't a, every, everybody's sitting on their hands right now. Man, nobody <laughs> wants a hand up. Do you act on the words you read? Do you act on the words you read? You see, Abraham believed God. Abraham believed God. Now I'm going to put you to the test. Can you handle the Abraham test? I don't think you can. Because God told Abraham to go. To go. Where am I going, Lord? I'll tell you when you get there. Would you go? Oh, but it wasn't as easy as you. Because he wasn't going to get in the car and go anywhere. Oh, come on. We all got nice cars. You start it up. Boom, turn the AC or the heat on, depending upon the weather. And you get on the nice highway and you drive somewhere. Go. Which direction, Lord? Which highway you want me on? Abraham didn't have that. No. They had to walk in the desert. In the heat. Even in the wintertime, it's hot. No, but they did have shoes. Abraham had 318 men who could draw a sword. You can bet most of them had wives. And you can bet a lot of them had children. Oh, goodness. He didn't have a pickup truck. There wasn't going to be a U-Haul truck carrying the food. They got to tote the food with them. Oh, you got to have animals because you don't have refrigeration. You're not going to Kroger to get your prepackaged meat. So if you're going to eat meat, you got to have an animal that you're going to kill later. Oh, come on. Y'all get this in a minute. So Abraham's going to go somewhere. you got to have a herd moving. you got to have pack animals loaded down with your beans and your rice. 
You gotta have tents and equipment. You going camping at every place you stop? You gotta have water for all this? And he said, get up and go. So Abraham got up and went. That's believing God. Do you believe God? He tells you to do things in this book right here. Did you get up and go? When he told you to keep the Sabbath, did you start keeping the Sabbath? When he told you to keep the dietary laws, did you he start keeping the dietary laws? When he told you to keep a different set of holy days, have you been there? Amen? Because this is what Abraham did. He, when he's told to go, he went. There wasn't a second guess. Where are you going? I don't know. God told me to get up and go. What road are you on? I'm not sure, but it's kind of that direction. He went. He went. It's important. Did you go? Do you act on the word you, you read? Is it real to you? Is this word real to you? So you've got to understand that. Or do you try to explain it away based on your own preconceived notions, your personal ideas, and your theology? Now, if you've got money in the bank, you write checks. Now, look, for you young people, I'm just going to tell you, if you want to keep money in the bank, you pay your bills with a paper check. Now, I know they're trying to tell you, young people, to do it with your phone. If you do your banking with your phone, you will pay the bank a lot of overdraft fees. Yeah. Let me explain something to you about the balance on the check on, on the phone. It's three days old. It's three days old. You already spent that money. It's gone. You got to keep it with a balance on paper if you want to keep money in your bank. I won't tell a story I told in court because he's sitting in here. So we'll leave that alone. When God promised you something, do you believe Him? Do you believe the promises that He's made to you? I was playing a, a, a Gina Bean uh, CD on the way up here. And it was talking, she goes into some of the blessings and the promises of God. The problem is, the singer isn't keeping the law of God to get the promises of God. Oh, come on, somebody. See, He didn't make idle promises to anybody who decided He wanted them. He made promises to people who were living by His laws and His commandments. That's why it's so important to be Torah observant. Because when you live by God's laws and commandments, you get the benefit of the you get the benefit of the promise. If you're not living them, you get the benefit of the curse. Oh, come on. I don't need nothing else to go wrong in my life. There's plenty going wrong in my life all by itself. I need things to go right. I need God to show up and ride to my rescue and bail me out when the world is tearing up my stuff. Amen? So I need to keep God's commandments so I got a promise He's going to save me in the end. may look bad in the beginning, but I know how it's going to end already. Oh, come on, that was a good place to shout out right there. Now, if you don't believe the Holy Scriptures in your hands, there's nothing I can do for you in here. I can teach you a lot of stuff. I'm a certified bookkeeper. I'm a master gardener. I run a janitorial firm. I can teach you all kinds of stuff. I can teach you this Bible. I can teach you this Bible. But if you don't believe this book, there ain't a thing I can do for you in here. There ain't a thing I can do for you if you don't believe this book. This book is the book. It's the book. All of it, from Genesis at the beginning to the maps at the end. Oh, but pastor, the old's done away. I'm going to show you at the end of this message how the old can't be done away. Right. To do away with the old, you did away with the new. Mm -hmm. Oh, that hurts. Oh, man, that's good preaching, though, right? That's, right? that's good preaching, though, right? Aren't you glad somebody will tell you that? Because you go to a lot of places, they tell you that the old's done away with. They just take it off with the new. But the Messiah's promised in the old. So if you do away with the old, you ain't got a Messiah. Oh, man, he went there again. I go there all the time. Romans chapter 1. Romans, we, you know, we're still in the New Testament, right? I ain't got an Old Testament verse in this message. Oh, how about that? How about that? Romans chapter 1. I'm not a good counselor. I'll tell you right now, I'm not a good counselor. I'm not a good counselor. You tell me your story. And I'm shaking my head the whole time. <laughs> but pastors, I'm supposed to have empathy when you're telling me your story. I'm just, no, no, no. No, you can't go that way. No, it's the wrong road. Wrong. You, you, you can't end up anywhere good. If, no, 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 no. So I'm, not, I'm supposed to agree with you. I'm supposed to validate your, I can't do it. I can't validate your feelings. You're going down the wrong road. You're going to wreck. You're going to wreck. And, and, and prophet niece is even worse. Good. She going she gonna nod and smile the way she's supposed to when you're talking, and then she gonna read you your mail when you get done. So it, it, neither one of us can counsel anybody. It's not worth anything. I know there's a pastor in this city, and I was told by somebody who was there that he put a hundred dollar bill on the podium and said, "I'll give you a hundred dollars if you go somewhere else to get counseled." I'm not a counselor. 
I don't have a hundred dollar bill. I can't give you that. But I'm not a good counselor. I tell you right now, I, I'm not. I'm not a good counselor because I'm not going to agree with you. I'm not going to validate your feelings. I'm not going to tell you it's all right. I'm going to look at you. And go no, 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 no. We get, you go from bad to worse. I'm no, no. Don't do that. No, stop. No, no. Lenise is just going to smile and nod. And then she's going to read you your mail. And you're going to wish you'd never called Lenise after that. I shouldn't have counseled Miss Lenise. What was I thinking? I should have known better. <laughs> yes, what you need, but it's not what you want. So Romans chapter 1, verse 16. I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. It's the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. So do you believe? See, this is very important. Do you believe? First for the Jew, then for the Gentile. Okay, he's not saying that the Gentiles don't have to keep the law anymore. He's saying, I mean, the Jews don't have to keep the law anymore. He's saying the Gentiles got to start. Yeah. Oh, we're back there again. My, we can't get off this. We're in the New Testament. I can't get off of this law stuff. It's, the whole thing's filled with it. Mm -hmm. For the gospel, in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed, a righteousness that's by faith from first to last. It's by faith from first to last. You might as well say from start to finish. You've got to believe in faith that when you accept Yeshua as your Savior, He's going to impute righteousness to you. And you've got to stay in that belief all the way to the end. But here's the rub. You can't go back and live like the heathen you were before you got saved. See, we want to go back and live like the heathen and say, I'm saved. That's how to go behind the woodshed. All these churches got to get everybody saved and they don't tell them what they got to do. They don't teach them how they got to change. They don't tell them how they got to live. Oh, you're saved. Once saved, always saved. Once saved is going into tribulation if you don't live right. Who wants to go into tribulation? All the hands are underneath again, man. They're sitting on their hands. Hey, nobody wants their hands up. I don't want you to go into tribulation. Because the devil knows he can beat you out of it. He doesn't think he can beat you out of it. He knows you can. he can beat you out of it. Evangelist Kelly Mack wrote this great book on the history of the seven churches. And it's probably one of the thickest books we have. It's one of the best books ever written any time of all time. It's not even on here, is it? Well, we'll just call it $14. So for $14, if you want to go online, is that what this is online? I think it's 14 right? Yeah. So if you go to Hungry Hearts Ministry with a Y dot com, you can buy this book. All right. I'm bringing this to a point. We read this book and we talk about the great examples of the martyrs, the people who were willing to be tortured to death for their faith and their belief. But here's, here's what we miss when we read that. We never think about the millions who refuse to do so. Oh, pastor. Yeah, so we talk about the thousands who were willing to be tortured to death for the faith, but we never talk about the millions who said, Oh, I don't know Jesus. No, I never heard of him. No, no, no. I... See, you don't remember all those people who have marked themselves for the lake of fire because they refused. The devil knows he can beat you out of it. This is why you've got to make it into rescue. Because he knows once he gets his hands on you in the great tribulation, you're not going to do it. Don't sit there and go, oh, I'm tough, man. I can do it. I can do it. He knows you're not going to do it. He knows he can beat you out of it. He knows how to torture you in just the right... Oh, come on. He's been working with your peeps for the beginning of time. He knows your weak spot. He knows how to hit you where you're going to say, oh, no, I don't know that Jesus. I never heard of him in my life. Because millions have already given up the faith down through history when faced with the choice between torture oh pastor yeah I went there so salvation belief and faith what does this mean you got to believe God to be saved and you must accept the righteousness that comes from faith the gospel is the good news of Yeshua's return to establish the kingdom of God we were talking last night, talking last night to Brother Chris over here, and I was saying, if you can link your finance to the kingdom of God, you're getting funded. If you can link your finance to the kingdom of God, you're getting funded. Because Yeshua is all about his kingdom. If your finance isn't linked with the kingdom of God, you're on your own. You're on your own. It's fourteen. It is fourteen that for that book online. So you want to get yourself in a position where when God's funding you, He's funding Himself. Yeah. Hey, 
Hey, that's what I'm talking about. Who, who, who couldn't use a little funding? Is anybody in here just independently wealthy that they don't need any funding? Everybody sit on those hands again. Them hands not, your hands not coming up. He came to establish the righteousness required for you to be a citizen in his kingdom. He came to establish the righteousness for you to be a citizen in his kingdom. That doesn't mean you get to go live like the heathen you were before you got saved. It means that once you get saved, you step up to a new level. Let me explain it to you another way. The reason I keep God's laws and commandments is because I am grateful. I know what the heathen I was, amen? I know what kind of life I lived in. Look, I wasn't... We always compare ourselves to somebody. I wasn't a murderer, man. It's okay. No, that's not the comparison. Because we're being compared with his righteous life on, on planet Earth, not the life of the lowest guy on the planet. So my sin is awful compared to Jesus' righteousness. And I need his righteousness imputed to me. Therefore, I'm grateful. I am grateful. You hear what I'm saying to you? I am grateful. I do not want to break the Sabbath anymore. I don't want to trample on the holy days. I don't want to put stuff in the mouth that don't go in there. I don't want to take things that don't belong to me, including God's tithe, because I'm grateful. You hear what I'm saying? I am grateful. I am so grateful. You just don't know what a heathen I was in the past. I'm grateful to be saved. It's important to me. There should be some shouting in here. I know y'all's past. So some of y'all need to really be shouting up in here. So when we accept that sacrifice, we can no longer live like we did before. We've got to learn to walk by the holiness laid out in the first part of this book. And the Lord has given us, look, look at here, if for no other reason than this, look at the revelations we got during Sukkot. Look at the astounding revelations we got during Sukkot about another whole level up in God. See, we lived at the level that we had before, and we did it well enough that he's entrusted us with a new level up. Amen? Oh, come on. That's big time. That is big time. He didn't give it to anybody else. He gave it to us. That's important, ain't it? Oh, come on, man. To have, to have the living Yeshua, resurrected Yeshua, so close to us, and we're willing to live for him so well that he's going to say, Okay, guys, well, I tell you what. How about this next level up if you're ready for it? Who ain't ready? I'm ready. I can't wait to get up there. Study it all out so I can make sure we teach it well. Amen? Amen. We got to learn to walk by holiness laid out in the first part of the book. Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Abraham received the righteousness that comes from the one and only sacrifice of Yeshua Messiah before Yeshua was even born. Oh, come on. Somewhere it says that he was sacrificed from before the foundation of the earth. So Abraham could tap into that because he believed. He believed the God he knew and he, he, that belief was evident in his actions. That's so important that your belief is evident in your actions. That's why you keep Shabbat. Because you're saying, I understand I'm saved. I understand who saved me. He's the God of the Sabbath. He said he was the God of the Sabbath. He said in Matthew 12, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. So how do you say no to Sabbath? You can't. You just do it. Amen? You get that Nike on. You just do it. So I'm old. I remember them old commercials. Abraham was covered in the blood. So much so that all of us are called children of Abraham when we act on that belief like he did. Amen? Hebrews chapter 11. <clears throat> I told you we're not even going in the Old Testament today. Hey! We're not even going in the Old Testament. I'm showing you the Old Testament from the New Testament. Amen? <clears throat> Hebrews 11 verse 1. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we don't see. It's being sure... How sure are you? How sure are you in the hope that you have of being made children of God in the kingdom of God? How sure are you? I'll tell you how sure. It's as sure as your Sabbath keeping. It's as sure as your dietary laws. It's as sure as your holy days. That's how sure you are. Amen? How sure are you? Because these are the, these are the qualifications that Yeshua Messiah is looking at in your life. These are the actions you take, and he's looking at those actions, and he's saying, well, they're pretty sure. Eh, them not so much. Eh, they don't believe at all. So he's looking at your life. He's not looking at your talk. He's looking at your life. Talk is cheap, amen. Everybody can talk a good game. It's another way to get out there and do a good game, amen. Oh, but we're not done. We just started in here, right? 
This is a great chapter. This is a chapter of the mighty works of God in some of the famous people of the Bible. And at the end of the chapter, they tell you, oh, we could have talked all day about these people. We just pulled a handful out for you. This whole book is the mighty acts of the one and only true and living God. Amen? By faith we understand the universe was formed at God's command. And he didn't use the king's English. So when he formed the earth, he said, Hire a rest, and it showed up. He didn't say the earth, or the, the... I can't even think of a King James way to say that. But anyway, he didn't use all that. He said Hebrew, Haaretz, and there it was. That's why we're moving to Hebrew prayers, because it's the language of the kingdom. Come oh, come on, somebody. You're not going to be talking English in the kingdom. Praise God, you're learning to pray in tongues now, because that faculty will be in there. you just be able to pray how you think, and it'll come out in Hebrew. <laughs> Oh, come on, that's good preaching right there. <clears throat> Don't tell me in no tongues. <clears throat> so, that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain. So Cain shows up, he brings the wrong sacrifice on the wrong day at the wrong time, he gets in trouble for it. Don't tell me you can bring the wrong sacrifice on the wrong day at the wrong time in the wrong way, and you're going to do any better than Cain. What happened to Cain? God said he was going to take him out somewhere, and he did. He couldn't get back from where God sent him. He's in the land of wandering. He's probably still wandering out there right now. Do you want to be with God? Because it said Abel's sacrifice, the right sacrifice on the right day at the right time in the right way, is still speaking to God right now. Look how many thousands of years later, Abel is still speaking. Oh, come on, somebody. This is why you come on the right day, at the right time, with the right thing, in the right way. Oh, and he's teaching us the right ways. Because we used to just show up on the right day. Not always even with the right thing in our hand, but we're on the right day at least. And then you learn to show up on the right day with the right thing in your hand. Hey, we got the right thing on the right day. But now we're learning the right ways to present. Yeah. Oh, take words with you. Amen. Amen. Hosea chapter 14 verse 2. Take words with you when you go. Take words with you. We're learning some new words. We're going to learn some new words. We're going to learn to take words with us. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> By faith Enoch was taken. There are people still to this day will say Enoch wasn't taken. What does it say right there? It says Enoch was taken. And it said he didn't see death. There's people right now say, oh, Enoch died somewhere else. How can Enoch die somewhere else when it says he was taken and he didn't die? Are you making, the, are you making this a lie? Because it says the same thing in Genesis, by the way. It isn't any different in Genesis. Genesis chapter 5 said Enoch was taken. He didn't see death. Hebrews 11 says Enoch was taken. He didn't see death. There's people right now believe, oh, Enoch went somewhere else, man. He died. He died like everybody else did. Yeah, look at here. He could not be found because God took him away. Before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. Wow. So we got to do. We got to be the people that please God. We got to be commended as people who please God, so God will take us. Amen. Amen. Oh, no, you won't want to be taken. The people taken are taken to the tribulation. Well, go look those Greek words up again because that ain't what they say. The Greek word for taken is paralambano, which used of a groom, Jewish groom, taking his wife to the wedding. The word left is aphiomi. is translated divorce three times in the, in the New Testament. So the word aphiomi is left. You're left behind, literally. The word taken is you're going to the place of safety or what we call the rescue or what some Christians want to call the rapture. You're taken to where you want to go, the wedding of the Lamb. Oh, come on, somebody. You don't want to go? Who, who wants to go? Every hand is up, boy. It's quick, but all them hands that were sitting on me, they shot up out of nowhere. Woo! Get my hand up there. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. This word faith is the Greek word pistis, P-I-S-T-I-S. -I -I and it means a mental acknowledgement followed by an action. You understand what God wants you to do, so you do it. You do it. Don't be slack about it either. Just remember, just remember your daddy when you were little. So I can't even say to these young kids, so they, they, their daddies don't spank them anymore. Or if you spank them, they call HHS and they take the kids away from you. But back when I grew up, if you called HHS... They might spank you when they got there, too. You called us for what? Well, bend over, boy. We'll, we'll take our turn. I was talking to one guy. He said, we get in trouble in the neighborhood. All the neighbors spanked us. I'm thinking, yeah, I remember them days. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. Oh, and hey, it was worse if they didn't, right? Because they were calling you daddy. They were calling you daddy. Oh, yeah, that was a slow walk home. That was a slow walk home because you knew what's coming. 
But you better not make it too slow, because if he come out the house for you, yeah. well, some of y'all get that. If he had to come out the house for you, you're really going to get beat. Oh, man, you better not be too slow, but boy, you didn't want to go home because he's standing at the door when you got there. He wasn't waiting up in the house. He's standing at the door with the paddle in his hand. Sometimes you got it in the doorway. Sometimes you wait till you got it in the house because he really sw he wanted to swing good. <laughs> Woo! You're going you to get airborne. You can bet on that. You're coming off the ground. You're coming off the ground. <laughs> so I'm old. Some of y'all don't understand that, but I'm old. This is the way life was back in the day. Yeah, Amen. Amen. Before anything else can happen, you've got to believe God exists. You gotta believe he's there. And if not, what are you doing? If not, why does it matter? If not, why would you ever come to Hungry Hearts? If you don't believe he exists, you got no business in here. Not that we're gonna run you out or anything, but you got no business in here because we're gonna make your life rough. <laughs> and not because we don't like you. God does exist. He is real, and he's not deaf, and he's not mute, and he's not way off somewhere where he's not looking. Oh, they used to say that back in the day. You can look at something the prophets. Oh, the Lord is deserting the land. He doesn't see what we're doing, all this bad stuff. How'd that work out for them? They got conquered by Nebuchadnezzar and hauled off to Babylon. It didn't work out good for them at all. It did not work out. It killed a lot of people. It did not work out well for them at all. He marched them out of, out of Jerusalem, buck naked, through the desert, all the way to, all the way to Babylon. Go, go, look, go look at the films. You're watching the war in Syria, right? We had to go through Syria to get to Iraq. Just go look at the films of these places. They are awful. They're 120 degrees in the summertime. It's rough. The terrain is desolate. They only, can't, they only gave you enough to keep you alive. So you in constant thirst and hunger. You sunburnt. Oh, come on, somebody. That ain't what you want. You don't want none of that. You don't want none of that. That's what happened to the people that said God isn't looking anymore. So why do so few people hear from God? Why do so many profane him every day? Why are so many abusive to God every day? Give him thanks and praise and glory that you and I aren't God. Because none of us would take the junk that we see heaped on him. Man, we'd be like the sons of thunder. Oh, you said what? Boom! Forget that right there. Oh, you want a piece of that too? Boom! And how about you? Boom! Man, we'd be, we'd be asking people to get in line. We'd be zapping them all over the place, man. We wouldn't take the stuff God takes. Here we talk about natural disasters going to inflict punishment on one part of the country acting up or not. We'd be much worse. Oh, man, hurricane. I'll show you a hurricane. I'll clean the whole state of Florida off. It'd be a sandbar. I won't even leave bushes on it, man. We'll wipe that sucker clean. You talk that way to me. I mean, think about how you would act if you were God and had to listen to the abuse that we heap on him every day. Oh, praise God. He's God because he's patient and he's merciful and he's slow to anger. Oh, come on, somebody. That's it. Once you believe he exists, then you've got to believe the record of the ancients. You have to believe the record of the ancients. They gave you this record. This is eyewitness testimony of people's encounters with the living God. And telling you what he's like. And telling you what he said to them. And telling you what he did to them. I had, had a little fun with Miss Sandy last night. We were talking about, talking about goals for Teshuvah. And the Lord had told me, <clears throat> if you got a family... How are you taking care of them? But just for Miss Sandy, I had to look up and go, what are you doing to them? <laughs> she got the best laugh out of that anybody. <laughs> what are you doing to them? So I want you to think about that for a minute. Once you believe in God, what are you doing to him? What are you doing to him? Are you taking the record that he has given you and taking it to heart and acting on those words? We talked last night about Rosh Hashanah and how to, how to set our year up so we get a good judgment. Judgment doesn't have to be bad. Some of y'all have test anxiety. Test doesn't, have to, test doesn't have to be bad. Test can be real good. When you walk in prepared, you know the stuff, and you know you're going to get 100. Test can be good. Test, you know, I used to love test day. Now, not so much when I was in high school, but when I went to the business college at night as a grown-up, I loved test day. Oh, William, you're crazy. No, I love testing because I knew I was going to get 100 on the test. I was prepared. See, it's the difference when you're in high school and you don't have any sense and a grown adult with children at home. i got to get this. I'm going to do it. It's not a question here. I had to give up all that time. I had to stay up late and go without sleep. Dog, all right, I'm coming in here for an A. I didn't come in here to play. If 
I was going to play, I'd be with my kids at the park, man. And I came in here to get an A. I didn't come in here for a B. I didn't, I didn't want no B up in here. I want to see one zero zero. If I don't see that, I'm not happy. But I came in there to win. Now, look, I prayed a lot. You learn how to pray real, real good when, when you're in night school. You're in night school. But see, I, I like, I, see, I, I can't pick on Malay. She's gone. But I, you, you know, when you're in school, you don't pray until test day. So you don't know. You don't know how to do this. You pray at test day. Well, it's too late to pray at test day. You already laid it out. The Lord ain't going to bail you out. You've been, playing, you've been playing the fool, not getting your lesson. You learn to pray when you go to class. Lord, you know I'm tired. You know I, I don't sleep at night. You know I got kids, and I got Miss Lanice, and I got a job. Lord, you need to put this in my brain, because my brain ain't working too good right now, and I'm not on my game. So, Lord, just while I'm in class, load this in. So you look, got to learn how to put some, you just repeat behind them prayers. You go to class to learn, and then you pray that it goes in. Yeah. So you don't wait till test day. It's too late. Your brain was impervious. It's like Teflon's in that learning. Beads up and runs off. So you got you got to learn you got to learn to pray to have that brain like a sponge so it, so it soaks it up when you're not paying attention. <sighs> then then you can pray for the A. Lord, this is how you pray. Lord Jesus, bring it all back to memory because you know I don't remember none of that stuff. Oh come on, you learn how to pray. You learn how to break them prayers down. Fine. Oh come on, somebody. We've got to accept the word he's given us. Otherwise, nothing in this life, the life to come or the tribulation, is going to make any sense to you. If you truly believe God, you'll act on his word. What does it that mean? It means when he tells you to accept the sacrifice of Yeshua, you'll take it. Oh, come on. What choice you got? Amen. What choice you got? You can accept the sacrifice of Yeshua and be a citizen of the kingdom of God. You can go into tribulation or you can go into the lake of fire. Oh, that's a hell of a that's a hell of a deal, right? <laughs> Think about it for a minute. Uh, one person got it. I had to make sure it worked out right because I think okay, good. all right. So let's let's go to make a let's make a deal. I'm old, see, money hall coming down there. You got door number one. You already have it. Salvation in Yeshua Messiah. Now, do you want to trade door number one for what's behind door number two? It's a buy back there, right? You want door number two? Oh, yeah, you got a pretty girl up there saying, oh, door number two, door number, you want door number two? How about door number three? So you go from selling out the door you got, salvation in Yeshua Messiah, to door number two, death and the tribulation. <laughs> oh, how about door number three, the lake of fire? Oh you, oh, you thought the canned goods were bad. You'd much rather have them three cases of canned goods stacked up there. The canned goods are a screaming by compared to the lake of fire door number three. But this is the way people treat this. I'll trade it out because I don't know if I want door number one. Man, you want door number one. You don't have a badge you want door number one. You don't want nothing but door number one. Amen? Amen. That's why it's number one. <laughs> <clears throat> so if you really believe... It means when he tells you that you who are saved, you... <laughs> that was good, man. You busted me up up here. <laughs> you act like it by obeying his laws and his commandments. If you believe God, you won't say, Pastor Bill's too hard. He doesn't have any love. You won't say that. You'll say, Pastor Bill's telling me right. He's telling me right so I can make the rescue. I love Pastor Bill. It may be a little hard sometimes, but he's going to get me there. He's going to get me there. You go to some of these other weak pastors... I like the way I like the way uh, that one prophet put them me years ago. I don't remember her name anymore, but she's called Jellyback Pastors. She always told me the Jellyback Pastors. They're telling you the easy things that you like to hear. You gonna go into tribulation with them? You ain't gonna like them then. Jelly doesn't do good. You ain't gonna like them then. <laughs> See, you got a hard pastor here to keep you in the straight and narrow. That it gets you in the gates to the rescue. You gonna love me then? You may hate me now, but when you're when you're zooming up in the sky, you are gonna be thinking, "I love Pastor Bill. He was the bomb, man. I am so happy. I am so happy. I was at Hungry Hearts. You know, you know, you're not gonna see the rescue. You realize that, right? You're not gonna see rescue. Either you're in it or you're not. Now, if you're in it. You're going to hear the shofar, and you're going to zoom so fast, it's going to happen so quick, you ain't going to see it. It's all of a sudden you're there. Hey, 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 happy time. Oh, there'll be some jumping and shouting in. I don't care what kind of quiet church you like. You'll be jumping and shouting in. If you miss the rescue, you're not going to see it. Paul's companions didn't hear shofar blowing. They heard thunder. And they look around. Oh, Lanisha's gone. Oh, goodness, what happened? 
You're not going to see it. You're going to hear the thunder, and when you look back, the folks taken are gone already. You're not going to see the rescue. You're either going to experience the rescue, or you're going to be sitting there going, I don't know why I didn't listen to that fool. Man, I don't know why I didn't listen. The man told me what I had to do. I just, I, why, why, why was I so hard at it? Why couldn't I just do it? It was only Shabbat. It's a day off after all. Oh. Oh. Romans chapter 10. <coughs> you won't tell me it's too hard to take off work on the Sabbath. You won't say it's too hard to stop eating pig. You won't tell me it's too hard to tithe. I need the money. You won't say none of those things. Because if you, if you believe, you'll know it's my ticket in. If you believe, you'll know these actions are my ticket in. Saved by faith, but faith requires an action. And these are the actions required by faith. Amen? I'm going to tell you something else. Salvation comes by faith, but your reward are based on works. Your reward is based on your works. But if you don't meet the minimum requirements, you've got to go into tribulation to prove your worth. Oh, it's always back to that tribulation again. Some hard when you get serious about a church. But your reward is based. Why don't you want reward? Who don't want reward? Why on earth would you do this and go through all this all your life on planet earth and, and get into the kingdom of heaven and Jesus is looking at you like, all right. Do you really, do you really want that look on his face when you go walking past? No, man, you want the big public display of affection. Hey, your name, the big hug. Everybody, this is so-and-so, my trusted servant, man. They gave it all they had. That's what you want to hear, right? Yeah. That's why you do these things. You want the reward. You want a big reward. Amen? I do. All right, verse 4. <clears throat> Christ is the end of the law. I don't know why they mistranslate this like this. And every, every version does it. That word end is the Greek word telos. It's T-E-L-O-S. Telos. It doesn't mean end. It means goal. It means goal. Christ is the goal of the law. We're all knuckleheads, so he had to come down and do it himself. We wouldn't listen. We wouldn't follow instructions. Oh, it's too hard, man. I can't do all this. So he had to come down and do it. Now he's looking and saying, I did it. Okay, there it is. You... Example in the New Testament, by the way. There it is. I did it. See? I did it. I did it all. Oh, my goodness. And not only did he do that, he's an observant Jew. Yeah. He's an observant Jew. Yeah. <laughs> he did a lot more than just keep the law. He said all these prayers. He said all these prayers. How do I know he said all these prayers? Because these prayers were set up in the second temple period 400 years before he was born. These were the prayers said by every Jew in Jesus' time. Everything on this sheet was a prayer. I don't have any new prayers. I looked up the old prayers. Why? Because they're the ones he said. If he didn't say them, I wasn't interested in them. If he said them, I want to say them. That's kind of hard in the South because Southern drawl doesn't quite go with the New York accent that needs to be on these prayers. But I give it my best, Amen. I don't have to say it as good as they said it. I didn't grow up this way. I just got to say it as good as I can say it. Hey, I said it as good as I can say it. I'm not being judged by how they say it. Even though I did cheat and go to the temple and, and try to say it along with them and kind of learn some of that, right? Why not? We're friends, why not? <laughs> He's the goal of the law. He's the goal. This is where we're being measured against. How well are you doing in your law keeping? Well, he's, he's holding you up to his standard. His, his, he's the measuring stick. How much of Yeshua did you achieve? Oh, man. And we're in the New Testament still, right? <coughs> so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. You want righteousness, right? You get it for believing. But believing is not the mental acknowledgement. It's the mental acknowledgement plus your action to start doing it. Moses describes in this way the righteousness is by the law. The man who does these things will live by them. you got to live by them. Jesus lived by them. If he didn't, he couldn't be your Savior. Oh, goodness. we got to be like him. He's the goal of the law. He lived to make it available to you. It was closed to you before because of the satanic 
human nature. <clears throat> See, human nature is not human. <clears throat> when you're born, you're empty. The only instinct you have is cry. I don't care what the issue is, you cry. You got a wet diaper, you cry. You hungry, you cry. You cold, you cry. You want to be held, you cry. Doesn't matter what it is, you only got one thing that runs in your brain when you're born. <clears throat> you have to write your own software. You have to write your own software. We're the only creature like that. The robin can only run the robin software. He can't be a blue jay. He can't be an eagle. He can't go home one day and say, Mrs. Robin, I was out flying today, <clears throat> and that eagle, man, he's got a nest. Man, we over here, we got these little trifling things, but the eagle, he's got a nest. Honey, I'm going to build us an eagle nest because you deserve better. He can't do it. He can only build a robin's nest. I don't care how much he wants to be an eagle, he can't do it. He can't do it. The eagle can't decide, you know what, honey? That badger, man, he's got a cave down up there. Man, he got five rooms down in that cave. We can just, we just fly down and crawl up in that cave, man, that five rooms. Why do we have to sit up here in the weather all the time and the cold and the wind and the storm? Let's just get down in the... I'm going to build you a badger cave, baby, because you're the, you're the best looking eagle that's ever been. He can't do it. He can't do it. He can't do it. He can only build that eagle's nest and he's stuck up in the weather. If it's raining, he's wet. If it's cold, he's freezing. If it's hot, he's burning up. If the wind blowing, he might be blown out of the nest along with the babies. He can't do a thing about it. That's just the way his life is. But you write your own software. You get to decide for yourself what you're going to do, how you're going to do it, the house you're going to live in, the job you're going to take, what you're going to do with your money, whether you're going to throw it away or you're going to save it. You make all these decisions for yourself. And then you go back and go, Jesus, it didn't work. You've got to save me. And he's... He's Jewish. Right? They're wonderful people. They're generous to a fault. But they're not going to give you money. They're not going to give you no money. They're not going to do it. You want to know why? It's not because they're mean. They're not going to give you any money. Because if you don't know what to do with the money. You already said you didn't know what to do with the money. You told them how you're out of money. So you don't know what to do. Why would they give you any more? It's just going to make your problem worse. They already know. You don't know how to handle money. They're not going to give you any money. They'll help you, but they're not going to give you any money. He'll give you a job. <clears throat> He'll give you a job. But he knows you're still going to throw the money away. But at least he did his part to help you. Tikkun olam. <clears throat> so human nature is in rebellion to God. And it comes from Satan. Christ is the promised Messiah. And he came and lived the law to open the way for your obedience provided you believe he's the promised Messiah. That's important to understand. He is the Messiah, the promised Messiah. And he came and lived a perfectly righteous life so you could have that righteousness provided you believe he's the promised Messiah. That's why you can't get rid of the Old Testament because that's the only way you got a promise where there's a Messiah. You do away with the Old Testament, then there's no Messiah and no promise. Right. Then you're dead in your sins. Mm -hmm. huh. Huh. Oh, but I don't like the Old Testament. I love the Old Testament. I love the Old Testament because that's where the promise of Messiah is. You know something else I love about the Old Testament? There's where the promise he's going to pay for my sins and get me out of this mess. That's why I love the Old Testament. You can tell me about them rules if you want to, but that's where the promise is that he's going to bail me out of this mess. Oh, it's in the Old Testament. That's why I love the Old Testament. I need me some Old Testament. Did it say in Isaiah that he's going to be the promised God lives with us, Emmanuel, the promised Emmanuel? That's in the Old Testament, right? Oh, you love the Old Testament, right? Didn't Sandy just do a message, the Gospel of Isaiah? Didn't she just do that? The Gospel of Isaiah. Don't you love Isaiah? Don't you love Isaiah? But it's in the old. You can't get rid of the old. If you get rid of the old, you lose all of that stuff. You know the rescue's in Isaiah too, right? Oh. Why do you want to get rid of Isaiah? Well, if you're going to keep Isaiah... And you're going to keep the promise of the Messiah in Deuteronomy, which is the second giving. I guess we're just in, right? We're just in. <clears throat> the other reason you can't do away with the Old Testament, you believe in God, right? He tells you all these things throughout the first part of the Bible, and then you think he goes back on his word in the second. 
So he tells you to do all this stuff in the first part, the Old Testament, and then you say, it's all done away in the New Testament. So he gave you all the stuff in the first, and then he goes back on his word in the second. Who wants a guy that goes back on his word? Don't we get upset with people who go back on their word? Isn't that how we do it? Oh yeah, Pastor B, I'm going to do this and this and this, and then the day shows up. Where are they at? Where they, where, they're not answering the phone. Where are they at? But we're telling God that He said all these promises in the Old Testament and He's going to go back on His Word in a second. How could you trust Him? Oh, wow. Wow, see, that's heavy. That, that's heavy right there. Doing with the Old Testament of your Bible is an oxymoron and it makes God out to be a liar. That's unbelief. That's textbook unbelief. If you think that the Old Testament's done away, you're openly proclaiming yourself to be an unbelief and you're denying that you're saved. Because you've got to believe God to be saved. Verse 6. <clears throat> but the righteousness that is in by faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Or who will ascend into the deep? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth. It is in your heart. And that is the word of faith we're proclaiming. That's a quote from Deuteronomy. And he, the quote from Deuteronomy goes like this. Who is going to ascend to heaven to bring down Torah? Who is going to ascend to the bottom of the deep to bring up Torah? But Torah is in your mouth. And he's telling you Torah is the word of faith that you believe God. This is in Romans. In the New Testament. Oh, man. Oh, he's not done. He's going to hit you again. He, I, was, I was just like, 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 like the uppercut. He's finna, he finna clock you right on out now. You ready? <clears throat> if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord. Can you say that? Jesus is Lord. Come on, that wasn't convincing. Jesus is Lord. All right, he just he just laid you out right there. You've been clocked right out. If you believe Torah's done away, you're out on the floor. You you cold. Count ten. You're out. Done. Right. You ready? Let's keep on. <clears throat> and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For as with your heart you believe and are justified, as with your mouth you confess and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. For there's no difference between Jew and Gentile. Not that the Jews give up the law. The Gentiles got to come to the law. And the same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Okay, so believe in God is faith. True belief in the subsequent action is faith. Right? Your actions demonstrate your faith. You said Jesus is Lord. What that means is Yeshua is Adonai. Yeshua is Adonai. That means you just said Jesus is the God of the Old Testament. Oh! So we can't say all that stuff in the Old and then go back on it in the New. Because that means he went back on his word. But he can't go back on his word. Because he is the word, and if he said it, it means it's true. Oh, pastor. Yeah, that's me. I went there. That's what I do. <laughs> I'm, I'm worse than the Allstate guy. Mayhem, right? <laughs> <clears throat> so if you do await the first part of the book, you have no God and no Savior. you got to believe that your Creator died in your place. Amen? And that the Ancient of Days, the Father, raised Him from the dead in order to give you life. He did not give you life to live like you were before you were saved. He gave you life to live newness of life uh, the way he lived life. John chapter 3. <clears throat> now we all love this chapter. Most everybody can quote John 3.16. But you don't read the parts on either side of it. Oh, see, it's easy to take that one. Oh, God so loved the world. He gave his only son to save us. Yeah, great. But all the stuff around it is not saying exactly the way that's being quoted. Oh, pastor. Verse 11, I tell you the truth, we speak of what we know and testify of what we've seen. But still you people do not accept our testimony. I've spoken to you of earthly things and you don't believe. How are you going to believe if I tell you heavenly things? So he's telling you earthly things. Oh, no, man, I can't, I can't keep that Sabbath, man. I, I, I can't stop working on Saturday. I just can't do it. But he's telling you if you can't do that and understand, how is he going to give you the heavenly things? Oh, come on, we just got like eight or nine days worth of revelation 
on heavenly things. I mean, I can't wait to start getting into it. And believe me, I am. I'm working on it every day. It's all I'm doing for Bible study now. That's why I'm pulling up these golden oldies from the past because I'm I'm working on these heavenly things. I got a sasser of solo duties done. I mean, I'm ready. To, I'm ready to start moving on this stuff because it's big. <clears throat> See, he gives you obedience in stages. He doesn't expect you to be the perfect end result of where he wants you. First thing he does is say, start keeping Shabbat. Let's start hanging out on Sabbath. So you start hanging out on Sabbath. And then he says, oh, by the way, you know, when you eat that stuff, you don't smell good. So stop eating that stuff so you smell good so we can hang out together on Sabbath. So you decide, you know what? It's probably not helping me anyway. The doctor told me I shouldn't eat it. So you know what? I think I'm going to give those things up. Then I smell good to Yeshua and we can hang out on Sabbath. And then he says, oh, by the way, there's a couple other days I want you to show up because we're going to have a really big party on those days. And you go, well, I like parties with the Lord. And I'm having a good time showing up on Shabbat. And now that I'm not eating unclean anymore, I smell good to him. And it kind of smells good to me now. So I think I'll start keeping these parties. So you start coming to the party. And after a while, he says, you know what? I got this tithing system here, and it opens the door for me to bless you financially. And you finally you say, you know what? I'm tired of my checkbook not balancing, and I would really like to have a little money, and I would like it to cover more than just the monthly bills. And so you say, I think I'm gonna tithe. And then he starts throwing a little blessing in there, and then you throw it in an offering once in a while, and he starts to get excited, and then he starts to open up the the floodgates of heaven and you start having a little little money in the account and you're not so tight all the time and so I'm having parties with the Lord on these seven days during the year and I'm hanging out with him on every Shabbat and I'm, I'm eating where he I smell good to him and so we're having a good time and then he says oh well I tell you what I will open up some vistas for you that will open our relationship and take it to a new level and then after doing that and you're at a new level and you're loving life and everything's going good he says you know what it's working out really good between us. Why don't you join my bride and we'll get married in the kingdom? And you think, hey, that sounds really good because the Lord's really cool and we're having a great time. And so you decide to take his up his offer of marriage. So he gives you a little piece and then it leads to another piece and it leads to another piece and it leads to another piece. And the whole time you're improving your life and everything's working out better. Your health clears up. Oh, come on. It takes a few years after you quit eating unclean. But your health starts clearing up and your problems start falling off and you got a little money in the bank and you're having a great time with the Lord. I mean, what's not to like? And then he gives you a little more. And your life gets even better. Why would you want to stop this process at any point in the way? I don't. I, what do I got to do to keep it alive? What do I got to do to get the next step? Right? Alright. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> no one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. You want eternal life. You believe in Him, right? You believe He's the one, the promised one to be lifted up so you can have eternal life. Now, everybody's telling, the devil's telling you through all these other churches that you already have eternal life. Who are you going to believe? Jesus or them? He just said, if you believe in Him, He'll give you eternal life. We can't give you what you already have. Oh, oh. So if you don't already have eternal life, then he's got to give it to you. But if you already have it, how can he give you what you already got? Then he says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, not to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Oh, so we love that verse, right? But you've got to believe. You've got to believe. All right. You ready for the second part? Because we're not done reading. <clears throat> for God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. Whoever believes in Him is not condemned. But that's that word pistis again. It's not that you think He's the Messiah. It's that you think He's the Messiah and you start doing what He says in the book because you believe. Then you won't be condemned. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. So belief, pistis, means you've got to take an action. And if you don't take the action, then he's looking at you and saying you don't believe. So he's looking at your life. He's looking at your life. So when, look at it from his point of view for a minute, not your own. Does he think your Sabbath observance means you believe? Does he think your dietary observance means you believe? 
does he think your holy day observance means you believe? That's another whole different way of looking at it, isn't it? I don't know about you, but I want mine to be good enough that when he looks, he says, yeah, yeah, Schultz believes. Yeah, Schultz believes. Yeah, he believes. I don't even want a question in there, right? You want a question in there? I don't want a question in there. I don't want a question in there. I don't want to be condemned with the world. I want to be saved from this world. Oh, that'll preach right there. <coughs> this is the verdict. This is a verdict. Where do you get a verdict? You get a verdict out of judgment. This is a verdict. This is a judgment. You're not going to escape this. Light has come into the world. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Light has come into the world. But men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. So we think of the murderer. He's looking at your Sabbath observance. He's looking at how well you love him by how well you keep his commandments. Are you keeping them? Because that's it. He's looking at you and me. <clears throat> Everyone who does evil hates the light. Him will not come into the light for fear his deeds will be exposed. I mean, Adam and Eve hid, right? right. Yes. They hid, right? They didn't want to step out in the light. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that he, it may be plainly seen that what he's done has been done through God. You can't break the commandments and it be done through God. So when you're keeping the commandments, you come into the light because you want God to see. <clears throat> see? See, Lord, I'm doing what you said to do. Yeah, come on. I'm, I'm making every effort, every effort I can make to make sure I'm living the way you said to live. You come into the light because you want the judgment. You want the good judgment. I'm doing what you said. You crave the words, well done, my good and faithful sir. You crave that stuff. You crave it. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. <clears throat> he gave his life to redeem you from death. Now how are you going to live? Same way that got you dead? Mm. That's how to trample the blood of the Son of Man underfoot. We don't want to do that. <clears throat> don't want to do that. <clears throat> Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 9. <clears throat> this is a heavy passage of scripture it's one of the heaviest ones you know I haven't been any further back toward the Old Testament than John right I've been up in Paul's letters right you know the one who they say did away with God's law oh yeah Paul did away with the law I don't see where you can find that and I'm not done <clears throat> verse 9 the coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with the work of Satan displayed in all kinds of counterfeit miracles signs and wonders the lawless one is about to be revealed. The Antichrist is about to be revealed. And his servant, the Pope, is going to bring down fire from heaven to confirm all these signs and wonders. And the whole world is going to follow after this. Okay. Do you believe? Because you've been told in advance. Because when you don't follow them, they're going to kill you. They're going to kill you. They're going to do all the counterfeit wonders and miracles. And when you don't go for it, they're going to put you to death. Oh, it gets better. This little passage isn't done yet. It's a stout one, right? <clears throat> and in every sort of evil that deceives those who are perishing, they perish because they refuse to love the truth and be saved. But this word should not be translated saved here. It's the Greek word sotiera. It's translated rescue three times in the New Testament. It should probably be translated eight or nine times rescue. Because these people are already saved. And he's telling you that what's coming is going to be so powerful. That it's going to deceive people who believe. And he's saying that you need to love the truth. The truth. That you're going to be a child of God. You're going to love that truth enough that you get rescued well you can't get there by breaking the commandments that's what gets you into the deceit <clears throat> look at verse 11 Just open, open your Bible look at verse 11 I want you to read it in your own book because it's, it's going to mess you up I don't think you're ready for this verse <clears throat> for this reason the Father sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie now, if the Father sends you powerful delusion, 
What makes you think you're escaping that? You're not escaping that. If the Father sends you a delusion because you didn't love His truth, you're just gone. You're just gone. Ain't no, ain't no help for you. It's over. So that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth, but have delighted in wickedness. That word wickedness is anomia, which means Torahlessness. You delight in Torahlessness. Man, this is strong teaching. It's been good preaching. It's quiet up in here. It's quiet. The word is quickly. The world is quickly being divided into two camps: those who believe and those who do not. Those who believe do what God says. Those who do not believe don't do what God says. If you believe God and you do what He says, or you don't believe and you don't. Those who do not believe are about to buy the biggest lie ever told. And the point of the whole Bible, and all of this word, and all of the reasoning is not, and all the pleading is not going to save you from this. If you don't believe and obey God, you are not going to have a choice in a short term. God the Father Himself is going to give you over this lie so you can't be saved. I want to thank you for watching this message today. I hope I didn't run you off with anointed preaching, but this word really required it. I hope this encourages you to get in this word and to dig out God's precious truth and that you love it with all of your heart and soul. I also want to offer you Pursuit Magazine. If you'll email me at hungryheartsmin at aol.com, I will mail you this magazine for free every quarter, no charge or obligation. We're also on the internet at hungryheartsministry with a y.com. We have many free materials and booklets, including the magazine. I want to thank you for watching and hope to see you again next week.